Uh, I'm Luis, I'm the manager of the hospital, and I'm going to talk about triage in the veterinary emergency with you guys. Just a little bit, I want you to like kind of get in with me. A little bit. It's going to be like more chit chat because this subject we need to be kind of talking and talking, and because it's subjective to each person. For someone, an emergency could be like red, and another emergency for other one could be yellow. Depends on the doctor, depends on the technician. So let's start. You say, my name is Luis. I'm born in Brazil. I was born and raised in Brazil. I did uh, vet school and I graduated in 2018. And since there, I was working in Brazil, uh, also in shelters, of work with ophthalmology and all those things. And in the middle of the pandemics, I decided to come here to the United States. Little in the middle of the pandemics, was a, <laughs> at the time was not that much like a good choice. But when I got here, yes, it was an amazing choice. So let's start from there. The first thing that we need to know is the difference between urgent and emergency. The main difference is kind of, for urgent, uh, the dog is not the dog, no, but the patient is not like in risk of the life. So it is not like threatening. Can be like like urgent and then need to be seen like soon, but it's not like um, life threatening. So the emergency, if you're another match is coming and that's life threatening, that's going in front of the urgent. So that's why we need to know those terms and see what the difference between and the uh, technician. Most of the time, technicians here do the first evaluations, not the doctors. So the technicians need to be uh, really good to grab like some small details. Because sometimes the owner doesn't come with the whole history in an emergency and they are always like nervous they always like in, unstable and they was like always like the, doesn't tell you like the full history so you need to grab the small details and trying to gather the information to choose between uh, all the parts of the emergency so here have some examples of emergency uh difficult to breathe in and choking uh, respiratory distress for cats, that's a big emergency. So always bring him back, don't touch with the doctor because a, a cat in a respiratory distress can literally bite you and hurt you really bad. Put in the oxygen chamber and wait for the doctor and the doctor's gonna assess and see everything. We have the severe bleedings. Uh, severe bleeding is uh, bleeding we used to say when it's like a main heart uh, arteria or like a big vein. So we always need to evaluate how much blood has been loose or have been lost before getting to the clinic. Uh, if the dog, the patient got here like unconscious and collapsed. So we need to evaluate what happened. If he has a seizure before, if it was just like a collapse, if that collapse came from a heat stroke or something like that. Here in Florida we have tons and tons of heat stroke in the in the summer so we need to take care about this also if they came with pale gums and also if it's like kind of cyanotic that needs to be seen by the doctor like right away the doctor will always be like get inside and like doctor i need you yell because we need those uh doctors giving all the attention for that patient at that time um as i told uh seizures and convulsions uh, also, ingestion of toxic uh, things like any kind of medication, any kind of drugs, they need to be seen fast as possible. Uh, xylitol is one of the main things. And grape, grape in the beginning, it's not like that emergency, but can turn into a really bad thing in future. So grapes, it's kind of just not super emergency. It's back there, but they need to they need to be seen. Check the uh, glucose and everything to make sure it's stable for that time. Uh, any kind of trauma, if like a trauma that's also bleeding can come from a trauma. And if a trauma in the head, a trauma like hit by a car or something like that, it's straight to the to the emergency room. Put a, a catheter in both arms most of the time because you need to make sure. Um, heat stroke, it's one of those most things that we have in here. Uh, in the hospital we've been seeing in the summer at least like four or five heat strokes and some of the owners doesn't know because uh when you overheat 
uh, your system and their system doesn't show them they are overheating, they literally just collapse. You don't feel that you're going to collapse, you collapse. That's what's happening. So that's why it's so important to take care of them in the, the heat waves. So for urgency, we have severe pain distress. Uh, most of the dogs and the cats, they are showing pain, but most of the time it could be like just a small pain and they show like that has a severe. Most of this like spoiled dogs, they are like this. So we need to take care and we need to evaluate and see everything like, is that like a pain that's being provided by some injury or some trauma? So we need to evaluate it to difference between the urgent and emergency. So that's why we need to always be all the sides and all the possibilities to take a look. Uh, if the dog it has inability to walk and some of the laminences, uh, that can be uh, provide uh, came from anything that he ate or he had like diarrhea, if he dehydrated or something that can make that happen. Uh, there is a trick question for you guys. A fracture, a bone fracture, is an emergency or is not an emergency? Just the fracture or a total Just fracture? the fracture. It's broken. Yeah, it's just urgent. Everyone thinks like a broken bone, it's an emergency, but it's not. Actually, only if it's uh, the broken bone is tapped into a vein or an arteria, that's an emergency because we need to close the things. But the fracture uh, on herself, it's not a thing. It's not an emergency. It, we need to take care because always when we're going to start the surgery, we're going to sometimes break the bone again to put in the place. So it's going to be restart all the cicatrization process. So lacerations and wound repair, most of the time providing by dog fights, cat fights, and they are if they are not like deep or they're not like bleeding that much, is not an emergency, it's just an urgency. Skin allergy, uh, that doesn't like, we saw uh, a lot of emergency and most of those, those clients, they were like, hey, my, my dog is itching so much, but that's not really an emergency. We need to take care of all the emergencies before skin, the otitis and all those things. But otitis is also another thing. If you have like a really deep otitis, that could be an emergency because it's starting having like neurologic signs. So those neurologic signs can show us that we need to take care of like as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, and uh, large reaction is causing for difficulty breathing and swallowing. We need to take care because sometimes of the bee stings, they can make their face super cute. That's the most adorable part. But also, it's, it's just an urgency, not an emergency, if it's not closing the, the nasal areas. So we can go for that. So the definition, the purpose of the triage is literally taking care of the patient and see how I'm going to assess the patient. It's going to be quick as possible or the patient can wait. Sometimes we got like one or two emergencies, like really bad emergencies at the same time. So we need to manage the team. So that's why uh, we need to have a really good person who go inside to do the triage. Because sometimes if someone bring an uh, emergency asking if, uh, thinking that's an emergency, but it's not, it's gonna just make our team split and the patient who needs to, uh, the attention at that time is gonna have just have the attention. So. We need to prioritize that patient that's with an emergency. Okay, um, so how the triage process happen? That's kind of standard, uh, just a standard thing that can change for each different hospital. So the hospital does in one way, other hospital does in another way. So I just kind of gather the the patronized thing for everyone to understand better. So we need to gather the information. Sometimes information can, as I told you, with the owner that nervous. Sometimes it's crying, so we need to evaluate what they're saying and what we are seeing at the same time. Sometimes they're saying uh, we got some nervous and, and clients crying that can barely say nothing to us. And then we need to get just this more information that we can understand to bring the dog inside, the patient inside, to assess all the vitals, to heart rate, respiratory rate, temperature, uh, the CRT and the mucous pigmentation and doing the full physical exam the, and everything to make sure that maybe it's not an emergency so we can wait, just taking a look and be um, on our observation. Oh, so determining of the level of emergency, we have four different levels. 
to patronize. So those levels should classify red is like a top critical emergency, the dog, the, dog, the patient. I'm going to keep saying the dog. <laughs> dog always comes first uh, in my mind. So the red is going to be to the critical patients. They go straight uh, on the emergency room. The doctor needs to be there like as soon as possible to make sure the animal is going to be passing through it and we're going to be able to stabilize him before getting any problems like health problems future or maybe death. Okay, the yellow ones that indicates uh, the patient are stable but required to be being seen like as soon as possible also. Uh, but if, that, if we have another red one, so the red one is always coming first. So the thing that it's always like we always try to do here is always when we got a new emergency and we have someone that's waiting we go to that person's like hey we got an emergency you now are one step back on the line so the increased time is going to wait that's an emergency work as a human emergency we have green green that usually those patients that came with uh, skin problems otitis and all those problems that can minor problems that we can deal with one two to three hours late then when they arrive here okay in black unfortunately it's for patients that get here like uh, that on arrival, and most of the time, like unlikely, it's unlikely we're gonna can help him to survive, because sometimes the patient just got here, literally uh, already dying in the process or dead, unfortunately. So that's the part that everyone's gonna work with me. Everyone's gonna chit chat. Is it an emergency, or which color should I choose? Let's go with the first one. That's Max. Max is a Labrador Retriever, five years old. He has severe bleeding on pale guns and rapid, rapid breathing. So he's painting, panting so much. Um, he was hit by a car and he has a deep laceration on his leg. He's starting shock, or it's, we, we're seeing already the signs of the shock. Um, he needs uh, immediate treatment to control bleeding and stabilize his condition. So if one of you are going to assess this dog on the lobby, which color are you going to choose? Red. 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 You, doctor? <laughs> I suppose uh, red can be appropriate. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Also red. OK, so everyone does mm -hmm. really right. We have Luna. Luna is a domestic short hair, two years old. She was climbing a tree, and she fell from that. And the owner saw the she was limping and also with a swelling ball. So she looks stable. She's vocalizing probably. So how you choose the color? Yellow. 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 Here you go. Green. Green. Mm, it's a yellow. But also, as I told in the beginning, it's kind of subjective because it depends on the everyone how they're going to look into the thing. Okay, and if you do a lot of triages, you're getting better in the triages. So, and also depends on the doctor on duty. For some doctors, we need to evaluate in different ways. Okay, our third case, it's Bailey, golden retriever, eight months. The owner gave her uh, chicken wings. She's vomiting, she's had diarrhea, and we can see blood on her vomit. So, and that's happened 24 hours ago. How are we going to choose it? Yellow. Yellow? Could be yellow. Okay. It's a chicken bone. I mean, it's not a Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's still 24 hours. You're going to end up in x ray at some point, but it's not. Yeah. Let's see. But it's red. Because she's already lethargic and she refused to eat. So she's like lethargic. She's probably losing blood inside. So that's why we, we need to evaluate that first. It's like, okay. Oh, I didn't say she was pain. No. no, I just said diarrhea and vomit. Just say diarrhea and I'm sorry. I didn't say that. Yes, it is. I was going to say that changes everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that changes everything. My bad. Okay. It was a trick. It, see, it was just making sure we were paying attention. Pale, okay. yeah. pale guns, red. Yeah. No pale guns, yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And also, we can see in the abdomen the, if it's losing blood, we can see the bloat. So we need to evaluate all those things. That's as I told, subjective. Everyone's going to choose a different color. Uh, Oliver, Siamese cat, seven years old, sneezing, coughing, and nasal discharge. 
Um, he may have like upper respiratory infection that requires evaluation treatment to prevent complications. How do you gonna choose this crawler? Yes. Oh, everyone's good. Yeah, unless he's not breathing. Yeah. Who's yeah. yeah. Bella, your child, 10 years old? She looked like this. So pretty cute. Um, Bella's having beef, uh, difficult to breathing, blue gums, and coughing up blood. Uh, so yes, I saying, that's yeah, not her. <laughs> just like that's well, a bigger yeah, dog. Yeah. Just to, um, for us to understand. Yeah. So she needs intervention on her airways. So how are we gonna yeah. rat? So let's gonna put like a layer of difficult now. So after we choose a rat, what the next step? What are you gonna do with this patient? Oh, first thing first is oxygen, definitely. Oxygen, any such as vomiting, blood, so you need an ultrasound of her chest to make sure there's no fluid floating in there. Also, catheter, get some blood work, see what kind of fluid she needs, whatever, uh, possibly Lasix if it's her heart, especially with the fluids in there. Mm -hmm. um, if she's breathing real bad, maybe a, a little, you know, factory reset, propofol CRI and the ET tube and yeah. respiratory, yeah. Most of those things. Milo, it's a main cone. He has a swollen abdomen, difficult to urinating. Uh, Milo has the, while he was condition, I'm sorry, I'm just reading over. <laughs> a swollen abdomen, uh, having difficult urinating since last night. He started last night. So they came here like 8 a.m. So well, how are we gonna choose this color? Well, if it just started last night, it'd be yellow. Oh, red. red. Yeah. Yellow. 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 But, Another, let's add another layer. Mm -hmm. He's been like this for three days. Then it's oh. right. <laughs> And what are we gonna do? Well, you gotta sedate, put in a catheter, urinary catheter, IV catheter. Yes. And get him a blood. Yes. <laughs> That's how we're gonna proceed. Uh, Rocky, it's a boxer, three years old. Uh, Rocky, uh, Rocky was gone for a couple hours and he came back with multiple isolations. We don't know what happened, if he was fighting, if he was just into the woods trying to, you know, being a dog. Um, and, but he's alert and responsive. We don't see like a lot of bleeding coming out. We just see like some spots of uh, the blood. And how are we gonna do? I have a question first, what color yes. is his gums? His gums? No, we don't have this, this, this information. Could be red. <laughs> I am. I would say because yellow because he does need attention. Yeah. Yeah. It's yellow. So if his guns was pale, it would be red. It would be red. And if he has a lot of bleeding, also it's gonna be red. Um, and what are we gonna do in this case? We're gonna get him inside as soon as possible. And what are our next steps? So a few fluids, if he's losing a lot of blood, clean up the room with some saline and possible some B12 injections to help mm -hmm. him. Exactly. We're going to start cleaning all the wounds, see if he's, uh, how, deep how, they how deep they are, and see if they have pockets. And then we're going to evaluate the doctor probably going to start the surgery to do the sutures and close the wounds. Our eighth case, it's Chloe. It's a Persian, four months. She is unable to stand having seizures. Um, the signs are, of course, neurological. It requires more immediate evaluation and treatment to prevent further seizures and minimize brain damage. Right. Are they able to stand now? Yes. So in this situation, how, what are our next steps? Always well, we start with the catheter. Um, oh. He, she, he or she might need like some valley injection or some medication to stop the seizure immediately and help um, cool down a little bit as well because they might generate a lot of heat from yes. getting the seizure. Yes, exactly. And the medication procedure depends on each doctor. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Cooper, it's a uh, German Shepherd, uh, six years old. Cooper uh, has been vomiting, having diarrhea, and he's lost his appetitis. He requires evaluation treatment addressed to the underlying cause of the gastrointestinal distress. Yellow. 
That's only the, the, the history that the owner gave to us. Unless you tell me what color the gums are, or how long has it been? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nope. See, in the triage, yeah. sometimes we don't do the gums or nothing. We just hear the, the owners telling the history about what's happening. So that's why sometimes we don't have all the information, then we need to kind of figure out by ourselves sometimes. Yeah. What's his how long has he been huh? vomiting? Diarrhea? What's his presentation? Like on presentation, when you see the dog come in, like you don't get to really evaluate him, but you can still see him across the room. Yeah, he's kind of good. He's kind of good. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yellow. Yeah. Needs to be seen, but yeah, yeah. Not dying. So, fermenting diarrhea has a lot of layers. <laughs> a lot well, of we can layers. put a lot of layers here, but <laughs> let's go to the next one. That's Lily, a hack dog. She unresponsive. No breathing or heartbeat. I'm thinking he might be dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cute dead picture. Just, just, just stretching. So which color are we gonna choose here? Black. Yes, black. But that's cameras, and sometimes you need to be kind of psychologist to the owner at this time. So even if it's black, we kind of going to prioritize. Oh, you we still gonna, have to yeah. listen for the heart. You know, yeah, do everything and see if the owner wants to start a CPR or or, or if they don't want to start a CPR and how long they kind of like right. not no briefing, um, no heartbeat. So if it's more than 30 minutes, we go more to the way it's starting. So no chance to the CPR come back. Um, but we need to be really responsible with those cases because the owner got here really um, upset, really sad, and they most of the time can't say nothing. So that's part of our job, kind of being psychologists of those times. So we need to be calm, show them we are calm, and explain what's happening. Uh, put them in a room, because they are uh, fragilized to be in the lobby. So we're going to put them in the room as fast as possible, and then we're going to explain everything and ask them to explain everything that's happened to us. Okay, Why someone is already trying to do the CPR if they allow the CPR. Okay, um, those are 10 cases just I prepared today for uh, this lecture, just kind of chit-chatting just to understand uh, how three hours works and if you has different uh, quest has questions or like present uh, any kind of disease or kind of create a, a fake patient to me, then we can realize everyone together, how we're gonna do it, how we're gonna prioritize. Sure. Yeah, She's like, oh, can I say yes? Sure. Okay. Um... Okay, so five-year-old Labrador hit by car. Um, it happened, they got there within 30 minutes. Um, dog, yeah, I don't know. Okay, okay. You, you give the Labrador five years hit by car. Give me another sign. Yeah. Uh, he is still alert and responsive, but there's some bleeding and laceration from the body, and then he is started to bruising on from his abdomen. Okay, so okay, you can see it from like mm -hmm. the skin and coat. Yeah, okay. what that means to us, that means that we have like a bleeding inside, mm -hmm. so they need to be assessed as soon as possible. It's going to be a red client, mm -hmm. so it's going up on the, on the, so on the line, mm -hmm. um, but if it's He's like responsive and everything. We can see lacerations, just small lacerations, but no bleeding like inside with no signs of bloat or nothing. He kind of can walk. He can turn into a yellow. Mm -hmm. So we need to evaluate. Your doctor sent someone to us today. Yeah. Can you share your patient with us and we're gonna evaluate how we treat them? Yes. Um, so uh, a 15 year old cat um, named Jack, with only one eye. Almost yeah. sixteen. Um, the respiratory distress and um, abdominal breathing. So just wraps to build the fluid. I was stable enough to be sent over. Doesn't need to perform emergency for I go to need this. So yes, send him over. Yeah, he got here. He was kind of stable. Did go to breathing, but he wasn't getting like 
Bayer are cyanotic. I'm sorry, just cyanotic. He was getting cyanotic. Uh, after we started the TPR, he was starting getting cyanotic because he was getting stressed by us. So in this time, he turned into a red. He got here as a yellow, but the, and, and when we were handling him, he turned into a red. So we need to put him on oxygen and see what's happening and how it's doing So to evaluate. So we did evaluate the doctor, sent also x-rays to us. Uh, we saw in the x-rays a little bit of fluid on the lungs. So the first, the next step is going to be the thoracosynthesis. So that's what we did. Uh, we took uh, 240 from the left side and 25 mLs from the other side. So after that, he's breathing way better. He's still in the oxygen chamber, just to make sure, but after one or two hours, if it's not like uh, making more liquid, so we can take him out, evaluate the, do the, what's the name when, meaning? When we decrease the oxygen, I forgot the word. Weaning. Weaning. weaning is the We're going to start weaning the oxygen and until he gets on zero and see how he's performed. So that's how it just happened here today. So just to bring it for you guys. And any more questions? I'm sorry you got here. Thank you. I can do a really cheap wrap up with you. So, okay, so thank you guys for coming here. We're going to have a break, a uh, cough break outside. Let's enjoy. Okay.
because you're here tonight to listen to us, like in the set, the, the like Fall for Pets Academy now, it's the first, I want to apologize because it's my first time talking in English. Oh. To everybody, nice. <laughs> because um, um, I'm gonna talk about me a little bit, but I want to um, apologize because, of course, we are Brazilians and it's our second language, the English. So sometimes we make some mistakes, but we are learning every day. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we are here to do um, a presentation for you guys about radiographs, ultrasounds, or CT. What we're going to shoot, choose, what we're going to uh, decide to do, or which one is better than the other, right? So I'm going to do a summary here for your brief introduction about myself. We're going to, I'm going to introduce you the questions to, that I make to myself when I'm in front of some uh, patient that you have to triage. use. Yeah, yeah, the triage. I don't do the triage. I worked a lot with clean work in internal medicine, but now 25 years I'm doing just the images. So oh. yes. So, but you have, you can understand. Um, uh, I'm gonna try to uh, explain to you to understand which difference, like what what you have to think about the difference between one or other. Okay. And the first, the other thing that it's the last thing is like remember always. Do what you can, okay? So my name is Simone Monteiro Dallagnol. It's the Dallagnol is a little bit like more difficult because um, it's Italian. It's my husband's, uh, so I, I prefer to do a, a little bit shorter. <laughs> so I graduated um, 1996 in Brazil in uh, the University of Federal do Paraná. It's south from Brazil. I, my master's degree is there too, so uh, I was a teacher in two universities over there, like doing radiology, teaching radiology. I'm a wife and mom of a dog and a, a, a little, <laughs> little boy, 11 years old. So we have a lot of stuff to do. Uh, this 25 years dealing with the images and trying to explain to my students, I I'm a little bit like, um, uh, like how can I say? I'm very, very passionate. Like I love what I do. I love imaging. So uh, this is something important because I can like sometimes uh, make you guys a little bit more like interesting about the imaging. So the first things that I think it's like when I have the patient in front of me or the doctor talking with me, like I'm trying to explain what, what you're going to do, what you think, it's the questions. What I need to see exactly, what I need to see. So my patient needs to stabilize to do the exams. How painful is that? I need help to perform what I can do by myself, right? And I have someone to check the results now or no? I understand that kind of, or can, that type of exam that I'm going to do or no? Or I'm just going to do because I, I have fun, <laughs> right? <laughs> so money is a problem. So majority time of yes. Yes, right? So unfortunately, we have to think about that. Those questions for me are very, very, very important because uh, make me understand and make, uh, put me in owners, like the owner's place too. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm trying to do my best. Again, the question that I told you guys that it's very, very important. I'm trying to do what it's possible to help. Okay. So what are you going to check? What are you going to have to think? Okay. I have to see the bones or the air or the fluid or a solid structure like that we have a lot, right? The foreign bodies. Or I want to just to check the general view, like just check something, okay. Or can we do right now? This is the moment, correct moment to do, or we can wait. Okay, so we have to think about that. 
Now we're going to talk about the, the to try to understand the differences in the positive things and the negative things about any each each one of them. The radiographs, oops, sorry. The radiographs, the positive points are the cost because it's cost the less, right? It's quicky and easy because you can do very quick one person task on the majority of the time. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to talk about that too. Guys. <laughs> this is my favorite question about that. So uh, most common in my, my, I fight a, a lot with them. <laughs> yeah. So the most common, so it's the oldest, so we can understand and we know more about it, right? Uh, and we can do the in the emergency, right? So the negative point is we have a lot of artifacts. So movement, right? Uh, we other thing had radiation. So we can't expose too much or you or the patient to a lot of radiation, correct? Uh, we need sedation sometimes. And this is my fight sometimes here <laughs> because uh, we have to do our best. And I want to provide you the answer. But sometimes I can't if you don't sedate because it's impossible mm -hmm. because the artifacts. So, yes. And we have the negative points because the positioning in the training needs a little bit, but it's not too negative. Now, right? You, you can like do a little bit because it's some like two hours of training and you can do everything. So, I usually put this to memorize like some facts that you use, like the A, B, C, D, E, F, G to the radiographs. So, just to points that we have to remember why you're going to use, right? So air, A, air, B, bones, C, chest, D, diaphragm, E, effusion, F, foreign body, G, GI, and general, and H, the heart. Those for me makes a little bit more easy, like especially the text, to understand like when they are in the, like the beginning, like the students too. So my students usually are saying, hey, this is EFT. So yes, <laughs> okay, so what do we have? Okay, so this is my, my, my tip. And about the sedation, about the needing, like we need sedation sometimes. Mm -hmm. So um, we are here, the guys always, I'm fighting again, against the too much exposition. So, we have to remember, we don't see the radiation, but it's there. So, and you're going to keep doing, keep doing, keep doing, keep doing. And this, along the time, you're going to probably could have something. I had a uh, thyroid cancer. So, I don't know if it was the radiation, but I had a lot of radiation in my life, 25 years doing that. So, I don't know if it was the cause or not, but could be, right? So um, I usually I say to the girls like don't 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 expose please please let's like, do with sedation so okay when we have like this to help we have the tapes we have the bean bags you know the 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 sandbags mm -hmm. to use and when they are sedated use it don't expose yourselves when they are sedated they stay there <laughs> so you can you can do this kind of uh, situation to help yourself to don't expose yourself and don't repeat 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 again like the, the, the positioning and the dog again to to radiation okay so this is a quick tip that i i like to to give to you so i, I put some examples and you know like uh the abcdfg that we have like before so the chest and the heart and the bones in the air, we have like everybody there. So this is something that we can see a lot and like we can do a lot. The chest is amazing to see, right? So the effusions, like we have like the, the lungs should be black and now it's white. So we have like a lot of some fluid there on the, on the lungs and we can see uh, 
the air on the bronchioles here. So you can see the bronchioles dilated here. So you can see perfectly that. You don't need no other other kind of um, uh, imaging for that. Do you want to press? I have a question. I was just, I was like, have I seen those x rays? Was that that you were here? Yes, okay. <laughs> all those are oh, ours. Okay. Yes, yeah, like, we have our patients for emergency. emergency. Yes, yes, yeah. all, all of them are, are all, yeah. all patients. Uh -huh. So, unfortunately, it's too wide, but it's have a, have a lot of dots. So, we know about that. So, unfortunately, we have to check meds. And we can, in this case, big a lot you can see in the radiographs the air right the traditional ddv right so we can see and it's very easy to use one view sometimes you can see just in one view so don't spend too much time and do everything that the emergency has to do okay so the fine bodies right so there is something there. So the stomach has something there. So yes, we have gas, we have something there extra. So we can see, and this is good. So radiographs are amazing, right? So we can do a lot. And here, what it is? Looks like, I will turn off the lights for you guys to see better. Yes. Okay. From here. Half away. Mm -hmm. A sock? Okay. Looks like a washed oh. water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some someone when I took the radiograph, someone told me like this is the iPod, the AirPods. Case. Oh. Is that what oh, it is? Was that one? Is that that one? No. I'm no, sorry, no. no. This is the case that the guy, the dog was peeing with blood. Oh, that one. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, a bladder stone, yes. two bladder stones. And you can see here inside, we have a little bit of like different uh, kind of shades, mm -hmm. like that, that it's the, the stone and the other stone. And if you see, we have a lot, uh, another ones here, yeah. in here. So when they, we have this dog had like calculi in the kidneys too, and the ureter. And the ultrasound was done too. So we have like the images of this in two um, kind of images. Okay. So this is not a big calculator, so, but this is like a long one, you know, like it's like the other problem that we can see in just one view. Like we have, like we can like identify like very fast. Okay. So, okay. Let's change a little bit to CT. So why I choose CT to talk about CT about CT after radiographs? Because CTs are the big, better radiographs. So they are amazing. They are like they they can uh, the, the the images are amazing. So it's it's a good chance to do like a plus, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, the positive points in the CT is the accuracy. So it's very, very good. So we have like for the bones, for example, we have like the accuracy to like 100%. Uh, the definition and the diagnostic and surgery planning. So especially to orthopedics. So when, the, when we have like orthopedic problems, I recommend sometimes instead use the radiographs you have to sedate you have to position it and if the, the guy planning to do a surgery so you can choose the CCT because you're gonna be doing an extra so you're gonna see something extra i'm gonna show you the negative points of course unfortunately is the cost uh the anesthesia some dogs or cats can't go to under anesthesia so we can use it and we need training to do right and it's a radiation too so we have to take care too so this uh, our machine here it's something that it's very very interesting because we don't have the the very like uh, big radiation scattering so this is very good so because of this we use like the small machine here, so we can like use with with the radiographs sometimes, and it's very good. So 
The CT, I, the indications are to the head, the thorax, abdomen, spine, and bones. And we have to talk about a little bit about the emergency and the elective CT. So the head, the fractures, the teeth, and ear and the sinus. Uh, the head is amazing for the CT. I usually recommend when they when they ask me, oh, can you see the the bulla for me? So in the radio, I say, can we do a CT, please? <laughs> because it's so difficult. It's so difficult. You have to position it, you have to sedate to do to do a, a better view. If you want a diagnostic with the radiographs, you need to sedate because you need, you have to open the mouth and put the bean like in the mouth. So you have to sedate. And if you have a sedation, like why not to expose and like do the, the CT, right? You have to another answer and you know, like more answers, maybe. Um, the teeth like uh, fractures, again, the thorax, lung contusions, torsions, and mats. Mats, especially the ones that we can't see in the radiographs. If you're planning to do a surgery and you have like doubt, oh my God, so I can't, if maybe I, I have or no, I, I don't know, I'm in doubt. If the, if the owner has the money to do a CT, it's amazing, okay? The abdomen, uh, the spine, the disc disease, the bones, joints, and fractures, of course. And fractures here in neoplasia, you can like uh, the, the joint disease. Sometimes we have like a bad, bad, bad joint disease that it's like completely deformed. And you don't know if it's like, oh my gosh, maybe it's cancer too. So I don't know, maybe CT can help you, okay? So the emergency CT and then the elective CT. So CT usually you do like when we 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 plan right with anesthesia, we do it like before the exams to see if everything is okay to the patient and everything. It's like us, right? So but sometimes we need to do the emergency. So this CT here we have like um, we can like scan the dog like the entire dog like when we have an emergency. So like a, a dog that was attacked or uh, hit by a car. So we can like do just that to do and see what we can, okay? So this is something important. So here are examples for you guys. Look, this city here, we can do a 3D mode. So we can do this and this, it's a static, like it's a picture right now. But in this city, you can like move this for you. So this is so cool, you know, like because you can move the the head and see the head in any any plane that you want. You can choose the slices to do and it's very, very interesting. So we can see the bulla, we can see the fractures there, like you can see everything. So and we have like the possibility to take it off the muscles and I see the like take the bone yeah, away, the away. Mm -hmm. like peel away. layer by yes. layer by peel layer away. yes really exactly cool. so this is That's if you want cool. to plan yes mm -hmm. if you want to plan in a surgery like for example if you have a, a big hematoma on the the tissue so you can peel remove peel tissue. and see those bone. That's cool. <laughs> yes it is. Yes it is. So I hear another example so it's from books but you can see like this is like abscess like in the ear, so it's good because you can see if there is um, some uh, um, effect, affecting the bones mm -hmm. too, so this is very important. Um, the sinus, I like the sinus here, we have a fracture inside, so this to see in the radiographs, it's very, very difficult, mm -hmm. you know, like it's, you can, but it's my gosh, hard. you know? Yeah. So, and here we have like the sinus and the, you know, like, the sinus, it's amazing to see because you can see if the bones are distracted or not. So this is very, very important. Especially here, we have a lot of fungus infections mm -hmm. in the nose. So we have a lot of uh, problems with this. This is like an exam from a, a friend that eats uh, orthopedist there in Brazil. So he makes a lot of CTs to play in his surgeries. So Dr. Casagrande is uh, here, for example, he uh, gave to me these pictures to, to introduce to you. So you can see on the hip, so we have dysplasia very severe and he's planning the, 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 uh, the 
has an ephemeral head. The ephemeral head, yes. Yeah. So he can plan perfectly the surgery and after the surgery. So he has a lot of uh, good experience with that and wow. it's amazing. So I, 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 I think it's a good idea to think about go the orthopedics for, for right. CT, okay? The ultrasound, uh, okay, so now, unfortunately, I have like a crush. <laughs> so here is my favorite. But um, uh, because I work a lot with this, uh, uh, ultrasound for me is fantastic because he, the image talk with me, like it's amazing. It's something in, you know, the movement and you can, uh, make like a puzzle, you know, like, and so for me, the ultrasound for me is like some, I have to find the answer because it's, I, I can't stop when I don't have the answer. So I'm very like this. So uh, it's fast. It's the positive points. We have a lot, like, let's, let's face it. So it's very fast. It's no invasive. Uh, we can see the multiple organs. Right, we can see the entire abdomen and you can see like everything. Uh, it's diagnostic sometimes, right? So, and we can like help with cycles, like aspiration, aspiration mm -hmm. and like you know, cystos and pieces yeah. or collect the fluids in the belly. Yeah. So, this could be very, very diagnostic. Um, emergency, and other thing that I'm going to talk about the A fest and the T fest. And the negative points, unfortunately, the gas, the tension and the pain, again, here, the sedation, sometimes I have to ask, uh, the painting, the motion, and we need training to do. Unfortunately, it's not a something that everybody can do, but I love to teach. So everybody goes when I'm in the room, like, hey, you see that, <laughs> you see that, you see that. So this is... You, I, I love to um, to to train people here too. So the A fast and T fast, it's not because it's fast, right? So everybody and sometimes when they found, when they talk with the owner like about that, so they think it oh it's because it's very fast. It is, but it uh, it's not, right? So the the translation about the the the, the word. Is abdominal or thoracic focus assessment with sonograph for trauma or triage or check. Okay, so this is something very, very amazing. Dr. Greg Lisiel, I don't know if everybody knows, is from Texas. He was the, the guy you know, that introduced this method. So um, I had the opportunity to be in a lecture with him. So he is an amazing guy. Um, he makes this training and uh, it's very, very fascinating the way that you can understand that something that it's an emergency and you can like help the doctor to do some uh, something to cure because sometimes you can like just to push the, the, the syringe with the fluid, for example, or uh, you can like make it make like a diagnostic. So in five minutes. So this is a, something that it's very, very interesting. So I put here some images for you. Of course, we are, I'm not gonna talk too much about how the images are or how, how we can see, but this is, could be another, another thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we can di diagnostic here a lot. I help the guys on the floor. Sometimes they think, Simone, can you do a fast for me? Or can you do a, 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 a T fast? Yes. Because sometimes helps where it's gonna you're gonna choose where you're going, mm -hmm. right? So it, this is very fascinating. So the ultrasound it's very important. So, uh, I diagnostic here some masses on the chest that they were not seen in the radiographs, nodules. So we can do a cytology. So this is very very cool. Okay. So the best friend in the ultrasound, remember guys, is the fluid. So everything with fluid, it's the ultrasound. Everything with gas, it's the radiographs, okay? Mm -hmm. So remember this is the best friend is the fluid. So everything it's, that is fluid in the ultrasound is black. The, the, oh, the ultrasound is 
about waves, sound waves. Mm -hmm. So the waves coming through the tissues, the different tissues, in the different substances. Mm -hmm. So here we have the fluid that is the frame of the ultrasound because it's the best material that the ultrasound, the sound is uh, traveling. traveling. Okay. So remember when we were kids, when we are under the pool, and we go like, let's talk about the under, under the, the pool, like, rrr, rrr. Yeah. remember that? So why we don't understand? But if you remember, it's very loud. The sound is very loud, but it's not understandable because the gas, the bubbles, blur, you know? So here we have the gas doing the reverberation. Oh, sorry. The reverberation is a word on the <laughs> The reverberation is uh, something that I usually, to my, my students, keep in mind. I keep saying that they, are, they have to think the sun through the clouds. Okay, I'm going to show you a picture. And when we have like the super hard, super hard structures, that like a fine body, for example, mm -hmm. remember, it's going to, the, the wave come and like, Crash. Crash into and come back. Mm -hmm. Not gonna through, not gonna pass. So it's gonna be doing a very big, big hard shadowing for me. So this is the differences. So the gas is passing a little bit, it's some backing, mm -hmm. some going, some backing. So echo mm -hmm. is doing so with the, the waves. So and the anechoic is like the fluid. So on the top, you can see here, let me, I'm gonna open a little bit to don't get too dark because your eyes are gonna hurt after. So you can see here the bladder on the top. So it's black because we have urine inside. So the wave is gonna go through and bye, wave. Black, okay? So it's not gonna do in echoes. So it's black. Here we have like a black situation too, but you can see here like the brown form, white dot, like very white form. So this is the, the shadowing material, like something very hard is there. So we're gonna, the, the wave is gonna pass, no, it's gonna poof in back. So it's gonna make me like the shadowing that something is very hard inside. <laughs> okay, and here, <laughs> what, is yeah. what is this? This reverberation. Um, reverberation yeah, about yeah. that? The uh, gas. Gas. So this is the gas. <laughs> you see? Mm -hmm. This is the reverberation. Look at this. It's so cute. <laughs> it it, it, it works. <laughs> you know, the images talk. So this is so cool. So this is the stomach with gas. So we can see here the stomach, like we we can see the you know the the membrane the, uh, the, the membrane the, the mucus, like the wall here, and we can see the gas inside. So the gas the waves are going there and like you know. So this is something here. What do you think it is? It's very very hard. It's very very hard, or it's it's there is a shape over there, or no? There is a shape, and it's very 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 hard. So it's not a fluid because it's it's compactated there, correct? So if you see, there is something there. Oh. <laughs> this is our friend. So okay, so it's a small toy. So this is easy for me when the ultrasound is. For me, it's fantastic to do the ultrasound because I'm like, okay, let me find it. I think it is like a corn cob. Like, no, it's a corn cob. <laughs> so, yes. So, the radiographs, tomography, and the ultrasound, in summary, is this, like, uh, to you understanding. So, radiographs, you use radiation. We spend about 10 minutes to perform. It's easy to perform. The majority of the cases are yeah. easy, right? Mm -hmm. The interpretation, it's the majority of the time we have a lot of experience with the radiograph so we can understand. And the cost is low. 
So we can choose radiographs. Sometimes, yes, we can. The majority of the cases, we're going to choose radiographs. So the thing is, when I have to choose other, other kind of uh, imaging, uh, I usually say one sometimes complement the mm -hmm. complete the other. Mm -hmm. Or compliments the They're other compliments. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes we have to use both. Sometimes it's necessary to use both. Sometimes I can't see totally in the radiographs there is a fine body or not. I have to choose the ultrasound to help me. So sometimes I don't see the fractures inside the school. So I have to choose to, to do, you know, like if the owner wants to do surgery or not. So I have to do CT too. So this is the, something important that we have to explain to the owner too. So sometimes I need both to do a better uh, diagnostic for you, for your dog, for your cat, and to, to, to try to understand, to try to understand. So the, so the CT, usually we, we spend 30 minutes doing the CT now. Uh, the performance it's sometimes very easy but sometimes not <laughs> so this is something like we can expect the interpretation unfortunately we need someone experienced to, to read uh, and the cost is a little bit like high than the radiographs and the ultrasound if it's not the TFAS and the AFAS that it's the cost is very low like during the emergency it's very it's very similar to the radiographs as, oh, it's way cheaper. Yes, yeah. a little bit more, right? No, no uh, the radiographs are like 400 and the TFAS or AFAS uh, is like 90 bucks. Yes, yeah, sometimes you can do the ultrasound, the TFAS or the AFAS to help, mm -hmm. you know? And the ultrasound uh, to performance generally is very easy when you have the training, of course. But the TFAS, it's something that we can like teach, we can learn, like it, this is just to perform and, and try to do the triage thing. Uh, and the interpretation usually it's not like, it's like kind of radiographs too. So we can like have like a lot of people like knowing about, so and I can help. Uh, and the ultrasound, the cost it's in between, I think. In the it's a little bit more than x-rays. Yeah, it's, the, yeah, it's, it's more than that. Yeah, it's more it's than, than the, x-rays, but definitely it's more than x-rays, but it's not the CT. It's in between CT and ultrasound. Okay, so here is the final example to you. It's the same uh, patient using the, the three kind of images. So just so you have an idea, it's a lot of fluid here or a mass here. I don't know exactly, but it's something here in the thorax, correct? Mm -hmm. So we can see the bones here, but we don't have sure about what is going on. We have like to help with like the ultrasound. Okay, so let's go to the ultrasound. Simone, can you put the ultrasound there? Yes, I can. So go there and like, oh my gosh, it's a lot of fluid. It's a, it could be an abscess or it could be uh, just a seroma or a mass with some like uh, necrotic mm -hmm. fluid. Mm -hmm. So here we can put a needle here and collect this fluid. Yes, we can. Okay, so we don't have like the answer still. So what are we gonna do? The CT. So the CT, we have like the answer, then we have like the abscess here, and we have like a lot of, like a lot of non mild uh, involvement, involvement like in the, the tissue, the, the bones. So this is something very important that we have to be very honest with the, the owner and be, okay, probably we have like osteomyelitis or something like that. We can, we can have like the, this, the cancer too. So, you know, so the, the surgery here, it's a different prognosis, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So this was I planning to, to present for you guys. Um, so I think if you have questions, I can answer. And it was my pleasure to, it will be my pleasure to be here to help you guys. Thank you. Do you have some questions? Do you yeah. actually teach classes? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, next uh, time. <laughs> we're, we're, we're planning to do that, right? We are, we are starting now. Now, now is the very first time speaking, so I'm training. 
uh, to do a, a, a training, like especially when we have like the T-Fest and the A-Fest, because it's easier. It's much easier and very useful. Mm -hmm. So we're going to plan that too. So yeah, nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. And um, next year, maybe I'm going to do my test to my certificate for America. For America. Yeah. So yeah. Good, good. good. <laughs> So yes, thank you so much guys yeah. for and if you have doubts, if you have questions sometimes about the lab how which one I have to choose. If you want like just call me. I the guys like can like someone I have a case like that, like that, and then and I don't know if you what they recommend. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's gonna be easier to do a CT or radio apps or ultrasound? I can help you guys. Or email me too, so please the guys like in front of office like can Send me an email. I have my email too. So if you want, just be be comfort to to help me. If I can help, I can help. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome.